Rick, thanks. Yeah, really happy to be here and talk about this uh, analysis approach. Um, so for a bit of background, let's imagine you're at the train station and unfortunately your train is delayed. Now you can entertain um, various different scenarios that explain why your train might be delayed. And each of these scenarios or models um, is associated with a different estimate of the train's delay. Now, let's say you want to, you want to determine for yourself what's the most probable value of the train's delay time. Um, because if it's too long, then you might as well just go home again. And one approach here would be to take just one model, which is deemed the most likely explanation of why the train might be delayed and take that model's estimate of the train's delay. But another approach would be to take all of these different scenarios and compute a weighted average of them using each model's probability as the weight. And um, this approach introduces what I want to talk about today, which is Bayesian model averaging in the context of multiple regression analysis. So we're all familiar with uh, multiple regression analysis where the outcome variable is modeled as a linear combination of a set of predictor variables and some unexplained variants. Um, now in psychological research, at least speaking for myself here, um, we often deal with relatively modest sample sizes with a large uh, collection of variables that you could potentially use to explain the outcome. Um, and so in this scenario, you're faced with a model selection problem um, because it's not always straightforward to determine which predictors you should use to explain your dependent variable. Of course, in some cases, you already have a very clear um, hypothesis or theoretical background that determines what model you should use. But um, more often than not, you're not quite sure what model to use here. And this is not a trivial problem because um, the number of uh, model variants scales up quite drastically with the number of um, potential predictor variables. So for example, if you have 10 predictor variables, there are already more than a thousand uh, models to consider. So to solve this model selection problem, one approach, which is probably the most common is to first uh, perform some kind of model selection. So you use some kind of statistical criteria to find one best model. Um, and then in a second step, you ditch all of the other models and using just that one selected model, you perform your statistical inferences. So uh, you, you determine the relationships between predictors and outcomes and you make uh, predictions uh, on your outcome variable. And although this is a common approach, it's not really ideal because your results in the second step are conditional on the first step, the model selection. And the problem is that very often there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the model selection. And if you don't take into account this uncertainty in your um, you know, statistical inferences using the final model, um, some problems can creep up. In particular, your regression coefficients tend to be overconfident. Um, and it also might generalize poorly to unseen data. So if you um, want to predict some uh, um, values for your outcome variable in new data, um, you might find actually that on this unseen data, the model you selected previously isn't the best or it, it yields very weird predictions. And also um, more of a conceptual point, but it's not really, um, you know, it enforces this all or nothing approach where there's a single best model that explains the data. Um, and an alternative approach, which is what I want to talk about here today, is to use Bayesian model averaging to retain all of the um, possible model variants. And then at, um, at the end of this analysis approach, you'll uh, end up with um, a weighted average of all of the different models on which you can base your substantial inferences. So um, in particular, you fit all of the models and you estimate the parameters like you normally would, but you also determine each model's probability, specifically the posterior probability of the model given the data. And then you combine these different models um, using those probabilities as weights. 
and I'll explain a little bit now how this works. Um, so first, consider just um, Bayesian inference um, in the context of a regression coefficient. So I have here a very simple model with just um, one regression coefficient, the slope. You start with a prior distribution, which represents um, plausible values for this parameter before seeing the data. Then um, after obtaining the data, you construct a likelihood distribution, which represents the probability of the data given a particular regression coefficient. So in this case, you can see that um, this regression, this uh, data is, uh, the probability of this data is maximized at a um, slope that's substantially different from zero. And um, you have a, a normalizing constant, the denominator term, which is the marginal likelihood. You can think of that as a um, weighted average of the likelihood distribution, where the weights are given by the prior probabilities. And then you obtain the posterior distribution, which is the probability of a regression coefficient given the data. And of course, these, uh, the posterior distribution is sensitive to your prior because if we pick a much more narrow prior distribution, reflecting our belief that there isn't much of a relationship, you can tell that this posterior is kind of shrunk in the direction of the prior. Now, this example is just um, one coefficient, but implicitly, uh, the, we, we also have a model term here. So this is a, just one model under consideration, but there's nothing that stops us from considering multiple models at the same time. Um, so I can make this explicit here in this equation by adding letter M for model. But um, you might start to get a bit confused. How can we consider multiple models at the same time? Well, here's just um, a simple example, which is what we use a lot in the context of uh, null hypothesis testing. So um, we already talked about on the left panel here, we already talked about prior distributions for uh, parameters within a model. And in this case, we have two models, a null model, which says a priori, uh, this coefficient is gonna be zero and an alternative model, which allows for various um, parameter values uh, quite in a wide range. So not just zero. What's new here is that we also um, perform Bayesian inference at a higher level of abstraction, namely over the model space. So model is itself a categorical variable and we can assign probabilities to each of the models under consideration. So in this case, we say a priori, uh, both models are equally likely. And then after observing the data, not only do we um, update our beliefs about the parameters within each model, so um, the blue curves here in the bottom right, but we also update our beliefs about the models. And how this actually works is uh, in this case, you um, basically you compute the marginal likelihood for each model. So the probability of the data given a model, that's the base factor, the ratio uh, for those two models. And you use that to update the prior uh, model probabilities to derive the posterior model probabilities. So this is just an example with two models, one of which was kind of a trivial uh, null model but we can scale this up and take into account many different models simultaneously. And this looks a bit complicated, but fundamentally we're doing the same thing as I showed you before with the regression coefficients. So you compute a model's posterior probability by multiplying the model's prior probability by uh, the model's likelihood with some um, uh, you know, denominator term. But if I show you the, the old equation again, you can see that all I'm doing is just um, substituting uh, the parameter beta with model M. So fundamentally, it's the same thing as we did previously. We're just performing inferences over models. And what's, why do we care again about these model probabilities? Well, we can use them to obtain a model averaged posterior distribution of a given parameter. And this is also referred to as the unconditional distribution in the sense that it's not conditional on one particular model, right? It's, it's, it takes into account all the different models simultaneously. 
and specifically um, you see that this term is just a sum of um, the posterior distribution of a parameter for a given model multiplied by the posterior probability of that model. To show you what that actually looks like, uh, let's say in this toy example, we have four different models on the consideration. And uh, this colored column here in the middle reflects the, each model's posterior probability. And these sum to one, of course. Um, and so we can see that model one was the, uh, had the most posterior probability, something like 60% but we also can't exclude these other uh, models. And you see that the um, uh, model average posterior distribution um, is a combination of all of these four distributions, which is in this case, primarily made up of model one, but also a little bit from uh, the other models. Now, um, let me show you just a practical example of how this works with real data. Uh, I'm going to use this example data set, which comes pre-installed with R. And I think it's a good example because it has a relatively modest sample size, 32 observations, um, where cars have been rated on various aspects of uh, performance and design. And uh, even with just five predictors, we already have 32 models to consider. So it's, uh, it's a good uh, example. If we perform a you know, conventional regression analysis for all possible models. Uh, we can just look at, um, you know, for each model, how well does it fit the data? And we can see that the best model, which is at the top here, um, is using horsepower and the car's weight to predict the car's fuel economy. And it has the highest posterior probability and also the highest base factor. But it's, you know, it's not a very convincing winner. Uh, the next best model, which uses different predictors, is pretty much on par with that top model. So this is, again, a good example to, to uh, think about how we can look across different models and find a model average solution. Now, if we just looked at the regression, the parameter estimates for the best model, i.e. the one with the highest base factor, we see a pretty clear story. So uh, the car's weight and the car's horsepower are both strongly negative predictors of fuel economy, which makes a lot of sense, of course. But if we use Bayesian model averaging, we see a different story, a bit more nuanced. So um, first of all, we are still happy that weight is a uh, significantly negative predictor of uh, the car's fuel economy. But for example, horsepower, um, we're not so certain anymore. Um, and you can see this kind of spike at zero, which is now uh, included. And this reflects the fact that um, some models do not include horsepower as a predictor. And yet there's still a pretty good explanation of the data. And that's why the model average posterior takes into account um, the estimate from those models as well. Okay, one last thing that uh, I want to talk about now quickly is to go from models to talk about specific effects. And we can achieve this using Bayesian model averaging uh, by computing something called inclusion probabilities. So here, what we're asking is, if we look across the full space of all the different models, um, is the data best model by, is it better to include a, predict, a particular predictor or to exclude it. So for example, if we ask, you know, if we want to predict fuel economy, is it really necessary to include the car's weight? And this is actually quite simple. Um, so you, sim you, you can just compute this uh, inclusion probability as the sum of the posterior model probabilities for all models that include this particular predictor. In other words, it's the sum to posterior probability of the family of models that include this predictor. And conversely, you can do the same for the family of models that excludes this predictor. And then you can uh, determine something called the inclusion base factor, which tells you how much more likely is the data among the family of models that includes this predictor relative to the family of models that excludes this predictor. Um, and just to show you quickly what that would look like. So we see here that um, 
again, the car's weight, the data is, you know, 109 times more likely among models that include the car's weight compared to those that exclude it. Um, the other results are a bit equivocal, but it's also nice to see that um, this predictor, DISP, which is engine displacement, um, there's quite strong evidence in favor of excluding it because the data was much less likely among models that included this predictor. And this is a bit more information than what you would get with a, um, you know, kind of ANOVA table where if the p-value is higher than a particular threshold, you can only um, fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is not the same as, um, you know, accepting the null hypothesis. Okay, so in conclusion, um, Bayesian model averaging helps you deal with two sources of uncertainty simultaneously, uncertainty about models and uncertainty about their respective parameters. So in doing so, you obtain more realistic and uh, accurate parameter estimate and predictions. Um, you retain all of the models, so you avoid this all or nothing uh, black or white model selection. And uh, you also have um, a better, better chance that one of your models is actually the true model of the data. So you, you're more robust against model misspecification. Um, if you want more information about this, I would recommend these two papers, particularly the, the paper on the right here, um, which is more practical. So it, it gives you kind of a um, uh, step-by-step guide on how to do this in freely available software like JASP. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions.